Deputy Speaker, I rise to bring the House's attention to deeply troubling allegations of egregious misconduct within the AFL. Yesterday, Federal Independent MP Andrew Wilkie stood up in Parliament and accused an AFL club of staging secret drug tests and covering up the results. Here's what Wilkie said. If there are no illegal drugs in the player's system, they are free to play. And if there are drugs in their system, the player is often asked to fake an injury. They're advised to lie about their condition. While the results of the off-the-book tests are kept secret and never shared with Sports Integrity Australia or WADA. What Wilkie told us is that a doctor who's worked with the Melbourne Football Club has come forward with allegations that the AFL secretly tests for illicit drugs and encourages players to fake injuries to avoid being retested and found with drugs in their system on game day. The allegations are credible, detailed, and provided in signed statements which have been given to me and which clearly identify the sources of the information. The big focus here is cocaine. So let's take a closer look at the AFL's drug policies. There's an illicit drugs policy and their anti-doping code. And when it comes to doping, we're talking about substances that are banned because they could improve a player's performance. The AFL has an anti-doping code to ensure the players know there are strict and clear consequences for taking performance enhancing drugs. The illicit drugs policy is for everything else, including recreational drugs. Now under that policy, if a player is found to have illicit drugs in their system, only the club doctor and the AFL chief medical officer are made aware of the finding. The player's confidentiality is protected, but they may need to undergo counselling. In order for us, the public, to find out about an AFL player who has tested positive to an illicit substance, they need to have tested positive twice. That's when we learn who the player is. Melbourne Demons coach Simon Goodwin addressed Wilkie's claims about his club this morning. He said the allegations were new to him, and basically his role at the D's means he's not part of any processes around drug testing. It's not for me to have an opinion right now. Um, all I do is I get the information that I'm required, and the policy says that it's information that should remain confidential. That's the way the policy is designed. So um, it's something that you will have to ask the AFL. Um, I'm sure it's something that they'll give good clarity on and we can all move forward. But then we heard from AFL CEO Andrew Dillon. Now, in short, Dillon refused to confirm or deny that players have been told to fake injuries to avoid game day testing. But he did say that club doctors routinely and secretly test players. And if the player is found to have an illicit drug in their system, take steps to prevent the player from taking part in either training or an AFL match, which the AFL says is for the player's welfare. Now, Dylan said that discussions between players and club doctors was private medical information that was up to the player to disclose publicly. But Dylan strongly denied the proposal that the AFL had a widespread illicit drugs problem. Federal MP Andrew Wilkie doesn't seem to think so. This isn't just a Melbourne problem. It's an AFL problem with multiple players coming to Melbourne from other teams with pre-existing cocaine dependencies, more than suggesting that drug testing workarounds are in fact commonplace elsewhere in the AFL. The documents in my possession also indicate a shocking unwillingness by senior AFL executives to address drug abuse by players and executives, particularly in relation to cocaine use. While the AFL have responded, there are plenty of people waiting for their next move. Aussie rules football is far too important to our nation for it to be damaged by the actions of some in the AFL, which is why tonight I call for intervention at the highest level and ask the Prime Minister to personally intervene in this matter. Because right now, Deputy Speaker, the term white line fever has taken on a different and sinister meaning at the AFL.